Good morning. Uh, today I get to talk to you about glorification. And if you guys have been following the two minute drill these last few weeks, we've covered basically the three phases of the Christian life. The first one being justification, that uh, we, you and I are justified by faith in Christ and Christ alone. Two, sanctification, uh, that ongoing process of being made holy. And then lastly, that uh, that glorification piece, that the final removal of sin. And I, I try to bring this into the, the, the sports realm, and I thought, okay, that I guess justification would be like receiving that scholarship, that college scholarship. You know, you're justified. Um, sanctification begin, you know, starts really when you you start training, and then for four or five years, it's it's in season, out of season, it's all year long. And then really for that final piece, that glorification uh, of winning that national championship. And, and, and we know that that fails in comparison to the glorification that you and I as believers uh, will receive in Christ when he returns at the sound of that last trumpet. I want to read from Philippians 3, 20 and 21. It talks about the changes that will take place when believers in Christ are glorified. It says, but our citizenship is in heaven and from it we await a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. So we know that everything in this world fails in comparison to, to knowing Christ and worshiping him. You and I were made for that very purpose, to know him and, and to be loved by him and to worship him for eternity. So C.S. Lewis, I, I love this quote by him, reminds us that if we find ourselves with a desire that nothing in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that we were made for another world. How true is that? So my charge to you, believer, uh, is to keep laboring for the Lord, knowing that glorification awaits you. As 1 Corinthians 15, 8, 15, 58 reminds us, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, be immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord.